This is the way my body sways when I'm thinking about you. Oh, I've been thinking about you night and day, night and day. Oh, I've been thinking about you night and day, night and day. Oh, I've been thinking about you night and day, night and day. Oh, I. Initially, when we first started the events, it was it was just trying to, you know, get because we didn't have a, a format to facilitate a regular contest. Because really, when you do a big contest, you you have all these people, but it comes down to the 16 best people, you know. So rather than like spending three days for a bunch of guys that we're going to lose anyhow, we just picked the best 16, and that was the beginning of how it started. As it gained momentum, because more and more people would come and see the show, we realized over time that we couldn't just have men; we had to have women's. So. Yeah, and the, and the women's longboard thing, there's a ton of talent and a ton of girls that are, you know, very, very, very good on riding longer boards. So once we were able to create a division for them, it's only made the thing grow. And I actually think it's one of the coolest parts because, you know, it's like you have to have both, you gotta have both styles. There's elegance in both ways people ride and, and it's cool to have them here. These Vans events, um, they're invitational, so they kind of um, incorporate some a, a very particular uh, vein in, in the culture. Um, I think it's a cool event. I think it's like the best one. I'm having some so much fun. And they really portray like the personality of each surfer, so everyone can like do his own art and his own board. And I think it's the best thing ever. Style being the most important thing, right? Uh, control and just kind of understanding of how to ride a variety of boards. Because in this stuff, riding a longboard isn't just the same board all the time. You kind of have to change up what you're riding due to the conditions, the quality of wave, a point wave, beach break. So I watch over time, you know, and, and social media, right? It's crazy. There's stuff, you know, you're watching videos all the time and different things. So it's almost like a lot of the talent is sent to me. Not on purpose, but just with, you know, and I still compete, and I'm still around a lot of the contests in California and, and Hawaii, so not a lot slips by me. The invitees, you know, I think there's a common thread. Uh, people can kind of respect one another in terms of ability and uh, creative control. Um, and obviously, everyone's coming from different parts of the world, so they have particular approaches or particular equipment, but. I'd say overall, there definitely is a, a, a common thread and a unity that is, in essence, um, the brotherhood of the surfers, for sure, and sisterhood. This is my first uh, time being invited to a duct tape festival. I shaped a few boards for the event, so I'm just kind of here to hang out. And uh, there's a, the festivals on starts tomorrow, and uh, everyone's going to come down and have a go of all the shapers' boards. And 
Yeah, it's been a really cool few days. Last time I was in Aracera was a few years ago and the, the weather was really bad, so it's nice to come back and kind of see everything all like lit up by the sun. <laughs> There's a lot of different surfers and a lot of different uh, categories of surfers in the world these days and these vans, duct tape events, really uh, cater for you know a wide range of um, of people, you know, like artists, shapers, surfers, and you know, just kind of a lot of cool people. So it's nice to bring everyone together from around the world and kind of you know feed off each other's energies. And it's just a great kind of it's just a great week to be able to hang out with with people that you wouldn't necessarily be able to hang out with, you know, a, apart from these events. So it's nice how everyone gets brought in together. Um, I've been here like seven years ago. So I didn't really remember the place and I think it's really sick, it's so beautiful and the weather is so nice, so it's perfect. This location's great. Uh, I heard, you know, it's a really nice wave. We had some good surfing in here uh, leading up to the event. Uh, everyone's got a pretty positive mental attitude and um, I think some of the musical groups are going to be great. Uh, the live shaping base are really beyond up to par and uh, the crew of people here are genuinely enthusiastic about the conversation, you know, different boards and people, different approaches from all around the globe. It, it's, uh, like I said, multifaceted in the arts. I, I dig it. I used to surf always with my like common surfboard, like three fins, small, thin, and with this event, I was shaping two different boards, like a big one and thick and small one and thick. And I think it's really important to try this type of board because you will really change your type of surfing. I think you should be open to what you ride and um, what you surf on. Logging and surfing anything, twin fins, single fins, whatever you want to ride. I think that's super cool. Uh, I think it, 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 it's a very um, romantic reminder that it's an option, absolutely. Um, cherishing something that maybe is always uh, in, in, in the mainstream peripheral. We've got a couple of the guys that compete that are musicians. It kind of started with Al playing at some of our events because he was playing like, you know, gigs at dinner and different stuff and it was always had a good it's just cool to do something when it's afterwards, you know what I mean? A little, it's, it, contests are fun, but they get boring. If you watch just the action all the time, you'll fall asleep. But if you mix it up and you have events and shaping and different things, it kind of takes the attention away to where you overall have a better party, which is kind of the reason why we're here. Obviously the surfing's deal, but it's a party, you know? So it just adds to the event and the overall, you know, enjoyment factor.
got it. You got it, man. Portugal is great, like I come here quite often during the year, it's super close to, to home, so I love it. It's like the waves are really good for longboarding and there's heaps of waves everywhere as well, so it's like super easy to surf and not like surf with so many people as well in the water, so no, I love Portugal. So we just arrived in Corcavelos and uh, I'm excited to go surfing here, it's the first time, so let's do it. <laughs> I haven't surfed in a weight suit in the last three months. <laughs> so it's gonna be interesting, but yeah, I, I prefer surfing in a bikini. It's just so much easier. It's just like, you can be in the water faster. And yeah, it's, I don't know, you get tan. It's nice. This is my baby. <laughs> We've been together for the last two years. <laughs> It got damaged in the plane, but... I'm here because I've been invited to the Duct Tape Invitational. It's the contest that Joel Tudor is creating with vans uh, around the world. And I'm glad we have one stop in, in Portugal. So I'm super excited to surf tomorrow at Ribera. Uh, the waves must be really big, but I think it's like the best event that a longboarder can do. So I'm really stoked and honored to be, to be here. I think that all the people who has been invited on this event are are here because they have such a great surfing, great style, and like it's like kind of like elitist to be to be on that contest. So I think if we're all here for that, it's already because we have the the style, and and now it will just be about performance. The most important is to have fun and 
try to catch like two good waves and yeah, be stuck with that. I was doing a lot of dance when I was younger and I think I keep that dancer girl on the water and uh, so I hope I look like someone who do ballet on the longboard that I don't know like my style is pretty like mellow and cruising and just uh, yeah trying to be elegant on the board as well. When I was younger, I used to have more pressure surfing because uh, I was I was so frustrating when I wasn't able to express myself in the water. So I was putting a lot of pressure into the contest. When I grew up, I used to love contests a lot. And those days, um, I think I prefer free surf. Even if I still love con contests, I, I prefer free surf because discovering a wave that you haven't surfed, it's like something like super magical. But I always have that competing part in my in my mind. So I like to do contests and it's fun because we, we're we here with so many other or the girls and it's like all guys and it's just like a big family that that surf together for one event so I don't know I like both but if I had to choose I will do free surf my entire life. Well I think the fact that the equal pay is now uh, for girls and guys in the WSL it's such a good thing because Today, the, the girls in the surfing industry have improved so much and they're not trying to be to surf like guys, they're like surfing like girls and like in the high performance and it's like insane to watch and see how all those girls are training maybe sometimes even harder than, than some guys because being like sport is like super macho and so I feel like girls has, have always have to prove to someone that they can do it and now to be recognized with the equal price money I think it's pretty sick and it will yeah it will definitely help like the surf like feminine surf to go higher because we're more recognized <laughs> So my goal for the future in the surfing industry will be to win a couple duct tapes. <laughs> that will be that will be sick to actually win that contest. I would love to do like more surf trip with girls and have, have a solid crew of, of girlfriends that, that surf and like travel around the world. I'll just keep working for that and see what happens. <laughs>